Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hard West. We are Cervantes and we are going to <laughs> make some law enforcement here at the mine. Well, we are mostly looking for Solomon, but let's attack the mine. Boom. So we have three guys this time. That's good. Um, I forgot to buy healing things though. Whoops. Well, let's do it like this. Give you the medical bag. Give you the angel, angelic sphere. Mm. Who needs aim and sight? You have pretty good aim. You have pretty bad aim. Let's give it to you. Six shooter. Let's give the Lancaster pistol and bone hand rifle. That's fine. Only three damage on this, but you can shoot twice, so that's kind of good. Let's see what kind of cards we have been dealt. Come on, come on. Thank you. Prayer. Every hit you cripples the target. An extra luck. Joker. Movement shadow cloak. I'm tempted to go for a free of kind here. Like this. That will give us plus 30 luck. Kind of cool. Um, you have the movement from a pair. Hmm. The HP would be nice to have on someone though. Extra aim instead of extra luck. Yeah, I think that's fine. Because you would be the one running around in close quarters, so you would need to have some defense or hit points. Um, what's this? Plus one HP. I guess that's okay for you. And the pair, maybe? That's good. Kind of. One, two, three, four. You can get. What's it called? Flush? Slate flush? Hmm. <laughs> Okay, um, aim, movement, movement. I mean, Paris, I, I really like aim, I really like movement. Can make uh, full houses as well. Hmm. Let's uh, see what we get from. Uh, Uh, flush here. Yeah, max HP. I'm not too keen with that, so let's just give you back this extra movement and luck and the Joker. And you should get the aim like so. Should we get shadow kill as well? Who wants to have terror? Sight. I mean, it's almost best that Cervantes, since he is our melee guy, these two will just be sniping most of the time with high aim. Everyone has 70 aim actually, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I think we have a decent layout here. Joachim has really low movement, but so be it. I guess I could give him the boots. But I kind of need the damage on uh, Cervantes here, so uh, I think it's fine. 
Get you some tobacco. Yeah, we really should have buy, bought some healing, but uh, we, we will be fine. I believe in ourselves here. Shotgun. Nah, I don't like the shotguns in this. It's too often you just end up in a firefight. A long range firefight. The old mine would soon become a clairvoyant tomb. Right. I still can't shake the feeling that Cassandra is the clairvoyant, but. Indeed, the abandoned mine was not so abandoned. Set up stage As again. They reached the compound, they instantly saw armed men. They suspected their new friend was locked up in the shed. Okay. So we are entering a little bit suspicious here with everyone on a row. Um, who has the disguise done? Rescue a mysterious ally. Mm, I guess we could just go here and rescue her, the first thing we do. Kind of a strange map, it's very open. Not a lot of cover, so either we... Problem is if we go for this rescue, I guess we will... Most likely trigger some fights. <laughs> I'm mostly just scouting right now. Get to lay on the lands here. Kind of <laughs> train is that? One sniper back here. This is the end of the map though, so... This is actually full cover, so... Getting our people up here might be a good thing. Let's see if we can make it. <laughs> Who has Shane kill? I guess it's actually our main guy. Oops, hello. The problem is that if I save her, I bet there will be hell to pay. Okay, that's the clairvoyant. Let's see what he says when I climb up here. Uh, we have a flank here now. <laughs> and we have someone behind the train. Right. So let's check inside here. I think there is no one. Nope. Six damage. But yeah, we will get flanked by two guys. So that's not good. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry. That's a problem if you have a snowball um, <coughs> microphone. It has no no way of muting. Um, I'm not sure how to deal with this. Maybe we can't go for him. It would be nice too, but I think it's impossible to make it safely. If he had less HP, we could go for Shane kill. But uh, Cervantes can't kill any one of these guys with uh, Navy gun here. Everyone has 8 hit points. Yeah. Eight hit points, that's 
way too much. If we go uh, take everyone here, we will only be able to fight from this full cover, which will be a death trap as well. This cover would be nice. But that guy is standing in the way, so we can't get over there. Yeah, we are in a strange position, at least we've done some scouting here. But. but yeah. Do we want to fight on multiple fronts or not? That's the question, I think. I mean, this is not a door. Nope. Well, it's a door, but it's barred, so... I think we need to fight from... Oh, we have to fight our way in, because we can't just start the fight inside. We could try to, s to rescue her and see what happens. As that might trigger something. So one thing we could do is that we bring uh, Shokim outside. And we actually bring uh, Cervantes to the prisoner. Hello. And we start kind of the map by opening this door. So So this way we could Oops, something could kill that guy. So she could kill this guy pretty easily. Might get uh, shot by the guy up here. Um, ish. Let's hope this doesn't trigger anything. The problem is I'm not sure if... No, I don't think that... Uh, too bad our main guy will not be able to kill this one safely. If I open this door and that trigger the combat, you have flanked by so many guys and uh, you can only do like 6 damage without using fanning. So I need to have uh, Shokim here. So Shokim needs to have line of sight on this guy. Is this okay position? Maybe. Nope. You can see these guys. You see them over here? Nope. It's bad. Well. Then you have to stand here. I guess that's fine. Can you stand here? Alright, let's do this. Let's open the door. They discovered a young woman, undoubtedly the author of the letter. She agreed to join their cause. I'm not sure if activating a peep a guy or woman with four hit points is a good idea. But at least we have one more gun. So maybe I actually could have skipped uh, bringing Shokim here. That's fine. Six damage. I think we could just do it like that because. Damn 
Let's see if we can shoot from here. Nope. No, let's just use the yards then. Fine. Crippled arm. Poo! Crippled something else. <laughs> Gabriel, Joachim, Rosario, and Cassandra must survive. Thank you for, for that. Um, right. So we can bring this quick guy all the way over here. Let's hope that our None survives here. Yeah, she's the one in uh, danger here. here one guy all the way back there shadow cloak is that active here in this small shadow all right if you say so yeah this is really bad position for our sniper has no cover. Well, let's take a shot and then move. That's a good thing with uh, the Lancaster pistol here. But this four hit point uh, woman, yeah we just need to keep her really far back. The problem is I think we need to get our sniper over here. Uh, actually, we had two guys outside here, so they might run in for the flank. So, we actually need to hurry over here, deal with these before we get flanked. I'm not sure if they can see us here. That shadow cloak seems to be OP if they can't, if we can just stand here shooting everyone like this. Well. Okay, that guy's still just standing there. That snipe. Good thing he didn't uh, go out here and flank us. Hmm. It's a bit risky, but let's stand here and reload. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I think that Cassandra will not do a whole lot. One guy. They will just go out here and stand in the open at like this. Okay. Broken game is broken. Oof. It's actually really close to us getting killed. Well, I will just keep on shooting these. Or the henchman. It's a woman, but alright. Hmm. I think I prefer to have 
over to this side. Oops, maybe I should have reloaded the judge first. Eight hit points, man. It will take some time to burn through. Feel a little bit cheap here, I have to say, but I'm playing by the game's rules. much else I can do. Okay. Where am I supposed to go with you? I can't just bring you around here, that would not be safe. We also have to do this strange long range fighting I guess. Four hit points, that's so low. Otherwise I would go for this flank. I'm running out of luck here. percent chance to hit. Can we get shadow somewhere else? Uh, or do we just... Hmm. Ten hit points. At least we are scaring them a little bit, but um, yeah. <laughs> this will take forever! Hmm. Hello! Don't mind me! Oh, he no, I didn't find the flank. But I really didn't think he would get be able to shoot through these windows here. That one. Right, take one shot first to remove some luck, and then reload this judge and shoot him again. And now we can soon actually move in here. Only three guys remain? What? Well, I guess the uh, Savantas have been killing like everyone. Oh, we don't have Cloak or Shadows anymore. Ooh. Yeah, let's not run in return and die. That guy is kind of dead though. No, oh, he found full cover, damn it. Can we snipe him with... You. I mean, the problem is that if I move here, I will get... Two guys with uh, height advantage against us, but... No? Her aim is the best. Well, I guess Shokim is quite good at shooting as well, but... Alright, so we have 
that guy and we have this guy. Tempting shot. I'm not in the shadows though, but that's fine. Can't be playing safe all day. Right. That's not the best position for him when I have my sniping nun over here. Taking out the trash. I feel like I cheesed this uh, <laughs> map quite a lot though. By just uh, shooting everyone here from shadows. What's that all about? Use Cassandra, that HP makes me too nervous. Eight hit points, and he's flanked. Or is he? Off cover. Okay, I guess he has this small box. We have full luck on our main guy, though, so I'm not that concerned actually. Not be a clear shot, really. Pooh. I don't have enough luck for this. Hmm. Can't really flank him because he has like the best position on the whole map. Full cover and height advantage against the whole map. Oops. Should have used the other weapon, but it's fine. It should be kind of dead now. Need to take a couple of pot shots. Every member of the order had been dispatched. Now they only needed to cut the cipher piece from the clairvoyant's still warm corpse. Oh, yeah. That was a bit of a strange mission, I have to say. Well, I guess the mission wasn't that strange, but Cassandra the map offered her help in bringing the order down. But first, she wished to collect her personal effects from the nearby village. All right. Uh, so that's good, I guess. I'm thinking about if we need to get weapons for Cassandra. Nah, that's fine. Let's go to the saloon. The bartender recognized Cassandra immediately, brightening when he saw her. His pleasant mood did not seem to extend to the Inquisitor and the other companions. Cassandra recovered her things from a trunk behind the bar and handed Cervantes a large bottle of cash in gratitude for her rescue. When they sat down to talk, Cassandra revealed a great many secrets. Chief among them that members of the Order were ha hiding among the natives to the south. When asked how she had become prisoner of the order, she replied that she had been the leader's personal assistant. He had accused her of disloyalty when she refused to have a cipher piece embedded in her flesh. The posse were sympathetic to her story, having heard Aisa's remarkably similar story. Right? Cassandra complained of sudden migraine. It had been a stressful time, she said, and 
this often happened to her in such cases. She held her head like she was trying to keep her brain seen and told Cervantes she needed to lie down. Paris concurred. They all needed a good night's sleep. Cervantes rented two rooms for the night and the party got some much needed shut eye. So Cervantes got one room for himself and Cassandra, bow, she bow wow, and the other ones in another room. Oops. In the morning Cassandra was gone, leaving only a new note, I hope when that happens. In it she begged that them for giving her deception and forget she ever existed. She said she bore them no ill will. Cervantes for his part was furious. He now understood that Cassandra had been the clairvoyant all along. Called it. He threw the note in the fire and ordered Paris to hunt her down if it took the rest of his life. The lieutenant was surprised by the ferocity Cervantes showed as well as the swiftness of the decision, but he knew what must be done and left immediately. Together Cervantes and Aisha continued the quest for the last pieces of the cipher. Cervantes wondered if sending Perez after Cassandra was the best course of action. Even so, he was not one to let go of a grudge. The clairvoyant had to die. Okay. He and Sister Rosa would have to do without Perez's protection from now on. That's bad. Hope we get some other guys though. Let's go to the natives. We have a lot of money though. Hmm. Strange. Out north of the village, they met a native man on his own, sitting in front of his tent with a melancholy look. When they hailed him, they discovered he spoke English fluently. Cervantes adopted his kindest manner and asked him about his worries. The Hosan told him his tale of woe. Okay, I guess the Hosan is his name. Well. The Hosan had befriended a family of farmers, some of the few that neither feared nor hated natives. His tribe, however, was horrified at this. They could not forgive him for befriending any of the race that had brought such suffering upon them. He had been shunned and expelled. Cervantes, ever the manipulator, knew he could exploit a man's sorrow to elicit secrets from him. The Horizon believed that he accumulated enough money he would be accepted among the white people. He also said he knew several order members in the area and that he was aware of the metal pieces in their flesh. He would not part with this information without gold in return. Well, that's why we got new money, I guess. One in the Indian village. Oh, let's pay him. Whatever. Smuggler cave. Let's pay him. Whatever. Trade post. Let's pay him. Whatever. So. Place the locket at the graveyard. Wood. Right. Indian village. Um. We have some healing though, so that's good. Defense, nah. Bloodberry. Um. Outlaw joint. Where were we supposed to go now again? Um, Indian village. Hmm. The tribe, the tribesman named Gom, that was the order's eyes and ears among the natives. Having dealt, never dealt with the horse and people before, Savantas asked him what would make his people turn on one another. The Hosam handed Savantas a pendant. Alright. So... Need to place this on the spur grounds, I guess? Let's ra <laughs> raid the graves and place the locket. Got some money, weird monocle. Unlocked, alright. 
Aisa was reluctant to desecrate the graves, but Sly Cervantes convinced her that since they were pagan graves, the normal, normal rules did not apply. After several hours, they had dug up most of the graves, collecting many valuables in the process. Cervantes then dropped the locket in a slightly out of the way spot as though it had accidentally been dropped there. And now we go here and frame the native. Using the information they had, they only killed the order member. Alright. And I exile Gonda. Alright. I have no idea what happened. I think that these uh, side things they are not just they're not interesting enough to really care. That's a problem. Okay, we should go to the outlaws somewhere, I think was one thing. This is the outlaw joint. Word had it is it he was ship hinge or the sharpest shot. Alright, let's approach him. One hundred bucks. Well, let's pay him, pay him the money. Cave. Interesting. Let's look at the words first. No, well, we have some money, so I'm not sure why we get these hiccups sometimes. Liquor ear necklace. Plus two heat. No, thank you. Opium. Just uh, frame the guy. Get some uh, cipher, and we got a new guy into our posse. All right. Who's the last one though? Can't remember. Trading post. All right. And talk to him again. You have to pause if you'd like to read these stories, I don't think they are that interesting. Cervantes was one cipher piece short of his goal. He returned to Dohosan and in his most intimidating voice demanded that the outcast reveal the final member of the order. Dohosan tried to resist but eventually he confessed. It was a shaman. He lived in isolation to the west of the village. Dohosan warned the Inquisitor gravely though. The man wielded formidable mystical powers. Dorsan hinted that he was in possession of a shard that could perfect, protect the wearer against the shaman's spiritual powers. Alright, let's buy it. I'm not sure if that's the item we need to use or if it's always active. Come on, game. Doesn't say anything. No, not a minute. Ah. Weird monocle. Nope. I don't think anything like that will really help us uh, against uh, the shaman. Shaman hut. The shaman lived in a tipi, as did the rest of the natives. His, however, was notably larger with intimidating decorations. Sir Vantus swore he felt a force emitted, emanating, emanating from within. The shaman would be expecting them. Right. So I will engage the shaman, shaman, in the next episode. But uh, thanks, you guys, for watching, and I see you then. Goodbye.